Welcome back to First Year Undergraduate Microeconomics. In the last few presentations, we've been looking at the monopoly model. That's based on a few assumptions. For example, the product is homogeneous, all buyers act as price takers, and there is a single seller, the monopoly, who sets the price to maximise its profit. We've noticed that if we have a profit-maximising monopolist that sets a single price to all customers, then that monopoly is going to trade off reduced output with a higher price. That's going to lead to a deadweight loss, as we examined in the last couple of presentations. But now we're going to change our assumption about one price. We're now going to consider what happens if a monopoly can price discriminate. In other words, a monopoly can set different prices to different buyers and or for different units. Price discrimination just means that the monopoly is going to be selling the same units at different prices depending on who the buyer is and or how many units the buyer has already purchased. So, there's two basic forms of price discrimination. There is price discrimination where the monopolist charges different customers different prices for the same product. For example, students might get a discount compared to non-students. Alternatively, the monopoly may charge a different price depending on how many units you buy. So if you buy only a couple of units, you may pay a high price per unit, but you may get a discount if you buy more units. Volume discounts are just a form of price discrimination. Why does the monopoly price discriminate? Well, the monopoly wants to raise its profit. And the basic intuition behind price discrimination is that the deadweight loss of a monopoly, the deadweight loss when a monopoly can only charge the same price for all units to all customers, that deadweight loss, that loss of gains in trade, doesn't help anyone. The monopoly would like to both get those gains from trade, in other words, increase the amount that is produced, but only if it can then seize those gains from trade in a way that increases its overall profit. So generally, price discrimination is going to have a lower deadweight loss. Not always, but generally. It will have a lower deadweight loss but it will have a rise in monopoly profits. So the customers can actually end up worse off with price discrimination. Again, not always, and we'll see some examples. So, let's start off with the extreme case first of perfect price discrimination. Let's imagine that the monopoly is a mind reader, uh, sort of like this guy over here and knows every person's marginal value for every unit. So not only can the monopoly set a personalised price, it can set the exact price that just equals the buyer's value, their marginal value, for any unit. Well, what would that sort of pricing scheme look like? Let's draw on the demand curve, so a normal downward sloping demand curve, and let's just remember that that demand curve is the marginal value curve. So let's also label it as the marginal value curve. Now, let's put on the marginal cost curve. So we'll have that as a normal upward sloping marginal cost curve. Now, before we put on marginal revenue, we have to think about how the monopoly prices. Well, we're assuming that the monopoly knows exactly the marginal value for every unit. So on the first unit, for example, back here, the monopoly is able to set a price for that unit exactly equal to the marginal willingness to pay for that unit to the highest valued buyer. So the monopolist is able to set a price right up here for that first unit. What about for the second unit? Well, similarly, for the second unit, the monopoly knows exactly the marginal willingness to pay for the second unit. So the monopoly can set a price for the second unit, again, just given by the marginal value or by the demand curve, right up here. So we've got the price for the first unit, and then the price for the second unit. What about for the third unit? Same thing. For the third unit, the monopoly is able to 
charge exactly the price given by the demand curve up here, P3. So, what's the marginal revenue curve for this monopoly? What is the extra amount the monopoly gets every time it sells an extra unit? Well, remember, because of price discrimination, it sets a high price for the first unit. When it sells two units, it sets a high price for the first unit and a pretty high price for the second unit. If it sells three units, it still sets a high price for the first unit and a pretty high price for the second unit, and also a pretty high but a bit lower price for the third unit, and so on. So every time the monopoly sells another unit, its marginal revenue is simply given by the height of the demand curve. For every Q, the demand curve simply tells us the extra revenue the monopoly gets when it sells another unit. In other words, in this particular example of perfect price discrimination, where the monopoly is a mind reader, the demand curve is the marginal revenue curve. So what's profit maximisation? Well, that's easy now. We know that profit maximisation will be the quantity where marginal cost equals marginal revenue. So profit maximisation will be at this quantity. Call that QM. What's the surplus going to be in this situation? What are the gains from trade? Well, notice that we have no deadweight loss now. We've now got QM being the socially optimal quantity of trade because it, it includes trade every unit where marginal value is above marginal cost. So we know that every unit where the marginal value is above the marginal cost now gets produced and traded. So we're maximising social welfare. But notice also that all the welfare goes to the monopoly. The monopoly leaves hardly anything for the consumers. So basically all of this gap between marginal social value and marginal social cost becomes producer surplus. So while the deadweight loss is gone in this example, it's all gone to the monopoly. In fact, all of the consumer surplus has disappeared and gone to the monopoly. So the monopoly would really, really like this solution. Fortunately for us, most businesses aren't necessarily mind readers. So while this is an extreme example and shows, firstly, how price discrimination can reduce deadweight loss, in this case it leads to socially efficient outcome, and how it can raise profits, all of a consumer surplus gets turned into producer surplus, this is, well... Not very realistic. However, in our next example, we'll look at a more realistic case to see how a monopoly can raise profits and reduce deadweight loss by price discriminating. Talk to you then.